My name is Stephen Martin Welsh. I'm a painter and I've based my career around portraiture. I enjoy the continual challenges that different characters bring to my work and they allow me a huge opportunity to vary my style. And no two sitters are ever the same. Joining me on the show today are a pair of symbols of our national passion. My first guest is the man who is now forever joined with that moment of all black greatness, the winning of the 2011 Rugby World Cup. His name, Sir Graham Henry. His legendary taciturn style could make this portrait process a tricky one. Also joining me is a man who shared that moment of rugby magic, current all black star and Auckland Blues captain, Kevin Mealamu. Kevin has this classic rugby face of cauliflower ears and old scars, but as I find out, he's a gentle guy with a big heart. How do you feel sitting for a portrait? Because you've never actually sat for a portrait. You've had your portrait done by a take it by fans and maybe just people that you know and whatnot, but actually to sit for a portrait, how do you feel? Are you comfortable at the moment or is it a little bit like, a bit nervous? Um, I am a bit nervous. Like that at the yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. I'm just wondering what the finished product will look like. Yeah. Uh, it's quite funny, you know. Like I've seen a few cartoons and stuff, so they'll like blow up the ear and yeah, yeah. yeah. Broken nose goes even further. And well, it starts. At, see, I've been looking at because it, it starts at the top and it's yep. Yeah, but that's the way it is. <laughs> that's I mean. the way it is. Yep, it's the way it is. And uh, as you know, like I always say, as uh, it's the price you pay for wanted to be an all black. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a few uh, cauliflower ears and a broken nose, but it was worth it. Yeah, yep. Obviously, you're here for a portrait. Have you ever sat for a portrait before? I mean, I That's need. That's why I'm sitting here. Yeah, you are. But I need to ask you. You've turned up for a portrait sitting, and you're you've got a bit of extra skin. So this is this is a, a facial process. Is it just too much in the sun. No, no. I need to ask you what's. It's a medical process. Yep. So there's some suspect cells there. Okay. Which could turn bad. Yep without going into too much detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, after a week and night, I might look normal. So you just have to put up with this horrible sight, but I'm sure that you can do something to help me here. When you walked in, we were all a little bit like, but yeah. we'll work well, it out. I thought, well, I thought, well... I've, I've got determination, I'll work I've it made, out. I've made a commitment, so I'm, yep. I'm here. Because no, no, I've you're made here. a commitment and I haven't got any other time to do it. I'm looking at Sue Graham, and to be honest, it's a bit shocking that he's turned up for a portrait session with a face that's badly peeling. It's as though he's saying to me, paint me as I am. I don't care about the opinion of others. And that's kind of typical of the man. This attitude of defiance, which I guess, you know, it served him well. I'll just grab a few of my, my tools. Uh, Graham, can I ask um, your early years, born and bred? Yeah, born and bred in Christchurch. Yeah. Spent a few of the very early years in Auckland because my father was a pilot. A pilot? My father was a pilot. He worked. He flew from Auckland to Suva. Oh, okay. So he, he flew flying boats, Sunderlands. Yeah, yeah. Catalinas in the war, NAC, teal, teal NAC probably. Yeah. So in his early years, he was based in Auckland. So we came up from Christchurch, spent a few years here, then went back to Christchurch for primary school. And so your father's. Um, did, did he fly in the war? Did yeah. I take it that that's where he learned to fly, or was he, was he flying before that? No, he flew Catalinas in the war. Yeah. So he flew around the Pacific looking for Japanese submar okay. submarines. He finished school at primary school and then worked in, Lo in, in Lowburn in North Canterbury in the orchards. Yeah. But always wanted to be a pilot, so he was self-taught. Uh, the local primary school teacher helped him with his physics and mathematics and yeah. he qualified as a pilot and a navigator and um, joined the Air Force. and was in the Second World War. So I was, I was born and raised in Tokoro. Yeah. Um, both my parents are Samoan and my mum was raised there as well. So her parents uh, arrived there, I think in the uh, early 60s. So pretty funny place for Samoans to go yeah, in the middle yeah. of the bush, but uh, that's where my grandparents went and um, that's pretty much where I did most of my growing up. So it's all to do with the forestry? Working in the you know, around that area? Is that what they originally came to New Zealand for? 
Um, I'm not too sure if that's what they came to New Zealand for, but uh, my granddad worked in the in the mill, and all my uncles did, and my dad worked there as well. So yeah, it was a big it was a big part of Tokoro growing up, and and it was something that uh, really I think defined Tokoro back in the days. Yeah, could you did you ever think that you'd work at the mill growing up? I didn't think I was going to be working at the mill when my dad worked. You know, I remember him uh, always catching the bus. Um, early in the morning or, or when he was on midnight shift, you know, uh, waiting for the bus to take him out to the mill. So I thought, no, I, I didn't think that one day I'd be doing that, but yeah, um, as fate had it, doing something different at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Kevin is one of these people whom you come across whose face, it just needs to be painted. Rugby players, boxers, or anyone with scars or old injuries presents challenges and rewards as I try to get those misaligned features and odd contours onto the canvas. Did you have that dream as a young boy of being an All Black? I think it was when I was standard, standard three and my brother was standard four, one of, one of his teachers, he said, well, why don't you come down to the club and play a bit of rugby? And we'd been playing quite a bit of uh, bull rush and stuff at school, but... Yeah, good training, eh, yes. bull rush, God. Um, but when, until we actually um, went down to the rugby club and played our first game and didn't realise how much we enjoyed it. And the memories of watching um, people, my heroes, when I was young as well. I remember watching Michael Jones play yeah. at the World Cup and stuff, so um, I got some great memories of rugby growing up. No, I went to school in Christchurch, went to secondary school in Christchurch. Uh, spent a few years getting a, a tertiary education, finished up at Otago University doing physical education, yeah. uh, qualified 69 and then taught at Christchurch Boys where I went to school. Came to Auckland in 1973 to join the staff at Auckland Grammar School when John Graham was the headmaster. Um, he was a marvellous role model, high standards, huge discipline, high expectation of staff and students. And you've definitely taken that on board and then you've, you've well, used hope, those hopefully principles? Hopefully I have, yeah. Well, I think most people that, that probably know you and have seen you in action think that that's the way that you operate. Yeah, well, that's nice. Yeah? Mm. Would that be a fair assumption or... I mean, because... Well, you learn, you learn from a lot of people, don't you? I'm finding it a challenge having to chat with Sir Graham. He's got such a layer of armour that he wears. And I guess that's the coaching thing that I'm even, you know, finding it hard to make a connection. I'm still trying to get around the skin issue, you know, how am I going to paint this portrait? I'm struggling, and it's, it is a real challenge. I have a picture of the face that I know of Graham, and I think I'm just going to have to take those images and try and put those on canvas. Obviously, you played rugby at school. Did you ever aspire to get to the level that you were coaching, as you know, as a player? Did you, you know? You, oh, obviously, sure. like you know, I want to be an All Black. Oh, for sure. I think uh, you know, I played first fifteen rugby at school, and I enjoyed that experience. We had a very good side. We were undefeated and had aspirations to play at a high level. I hadn't achieved any great heights as a player, but I was uh, a passionate trier. Mm -hmm. I guess coaching was a natural progression for me. You know, I was tra a trained physical education teacher, so coaching was an extension of the job. Yep. Went to Kelson Boys High School, and I was deputy principal there for five years and principal there for ten. And I resigned as school principal in 1996 and became a professional rugby coach. Mm -hmm. And I guess the rest is history. So you're at school. I mean, do you remember the... Uh, the impressionable years with sport. Do you remember like moments when you've scored a winning try, or you've, you know, you've been an integral part in your team winning? I mean, I think for me, one of the things that really stand out, and I remember remember it vividly, was when I um, missed out on one of the teams, um, and because it was a weight division. Yeah. Uh, I remember going into the weigh-in, and I was over by a kilo or Ooh, 500 grams or something. Yeah, not far. So. Uh, I remember because my brother made it in, he was under and everyone else was under, I was the one that missed out because I was 
I was overweight. <laughs> yeah. And that disappointment, I remember going to my parents and crying, you know, and and I just I remember the the feeling. Yeah. And I can see everything real clearly today. And this is when I was standing for. It's it's still been with me to this day. Those memories does that sort of help you focus today? Because you don't want that disappointment again. Yeah, but I, I really think uh, you always. And, and I think you know, for my career, have been able to get good gains from um, from the learnings I've had along the way. And yeah. it's stuff that stay with you. Like I've been been lucky to have a lot of wins in my career, but I still remember the losses they yeah, did the yeah. most, you know, so they, they stick with me the most. You've definitely had those those up and downs. I mean, I mean there's been the... Uh, you, you've coached the Lions. I wanted to show the people back home that I could do the business, you know. Looking back on it in hindsight, you'd still follow that same path that you took? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the right decisions are made. I've been lucky I've missed out on things, which have turned out to be a positive. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. So applying for the Auckland job in 95 and not getting it, and then going to, going to Wales and coaching the Lions and coming back and then getting the Auckland, uh, the Albrecht job, yeah. it all worked out superbly in the finish. Mm -hmm. Disappointed at the time, so you never know how the ball's going to bounce. Was it vindication when you got the job eventually? Oh, it was huge satisfaction. Um, it was something that I'd always dreamed of doing. Mm -hmm. Um, like I was a pretty ambitious rugby coach and coaching the All Blacks was the ultimate so it was a huge feeling of pride to be appointed to coach of your own country yeah. and that happened at the end of 2003 um, after they told me when I went to Wales that I would never coach in New Zealand again <laughs> so it was a bit of a turnaround yeah you get that call you're in the All Black squad for the very first time I mean, do you remember who you were talking to, where you were? Is it, is it quite a specific memory for you? We're over in Waiheke and you didn't get any phone calls or anything, so, you know, and I, I didn't really expect it, you know, because um, I had a good season. I was just enjoying having a bit of time with uh, Samuel, my son, that, uh, while we were over there, and, um, and Ty was over there as well, my wife. Um, so I was playing around with him and then I heard my name called out, you know, and I... Just hit me. I was quite shocked, to be honest. But um, it was just really nice being around, uh, being there with the, with the family, and just the way it happened, just around a little radio. Yes. Yeah. One of those little transistor radios, small, so it was pretty cool. What is the proudest moment of, of to date of your All Black career? It'll have to be last year. Yeah. Being able to um, lift that little golden cup. Very special moment. Um, proud moment when I, I saw my fellow front row go over for the try off the yeah. line out, you know, that was, that was, that was primo, you know. <laughs> Especially in the World Cup uh, final, be able to see Woody go over was awesome. And um, I remember coming off uh, in the, early in the second half and just being like everyone else, just uh, just holding everything, yeah. uh, holding your heart in your hands, you know, just wanting for the boys to, to go. Um, for the next 40 minutes, and they did that so well. You know, yeah. just shut the game out at the end there. And um, did did you get like? Was there a certain point in the second half where you thought they're gonna they're gonna hold on? We, boys are gonna do it, or was it until that whistle went, you weren't gonna allow yourself to live that dream? Oh, it was, it was pretty much until the whistle went. Yeah. And especially the way how we shut the game off, like. There's been instances where you've seen, like, uh, the ref will say, oh, he's sealing the ball off, you yeah. know, so give the penalty to the other side. So, you know, we, right up until the ball was kicked out, it just weren't going to say yes, we'd won until the, until the whistle had blown. So, amazing feeling. I remember jumping up on the sideline like a little kid and then sprinting out to see the boys out in the middle of the field. So, yeah. Um, and couldn't have done it with uh, a better bunch of men. During that... World Cup final, when did you realise that you'd got it? When the whistle went. Right, the last 80, 80 second minute or whatever it was, whatever, whatever, it was at that whistle, was that? Well, it was 8 7, anything could have happened. Yeah. Um, like, I got great pride in what the boys did. It was bloody, it was, it was hugely gut wrenching. It was a very nervous time. And 
Like when you're in the heat of the battle well, on the field, it's, you've got things to do. We didn't play well in that final, yeah. but we showed a huge amount of guts and mental strength to win the game. So to be called World Champions is special, mm. and it hadn't happened in this country for 24 years. So, yeah. so it, was a, it was a major. We'd been longing for it for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got that impression. Yeah. yeah. And being able to rule off correctly with the team was marvellous. You know, we had a social time in Wellington before the final street parade. And that night was special because the whole team got together, uh, spent four or five hours together just quietly and just chatted and had a meal. And, and I had a bit of a chat to them and thanked them for what they did. And that was just a great way of ruling off and, and thanking them for their, what they did for this country and what yeah. they did for All Black legacy and what they did for the oldies like me, you know. So it was a good way to rule off and, and say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing. It's, yeah. uh, it's been a privilege to, to be involved. Pretty happy with the way it's going. I don't know if you might like it because just what I'm going to do with it, but I know that there's going to be all back fans and the public. I think they'll really enjoy it. I think they'll really, they'll really like it. I trust but, you. Yeah, but look, I think that's, um, I think that's as far as we're going to take it today. I think I've got everything that I need. Thank you so much for coming in. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Uh, it's been enjoyable and insightful. Yeah, I've loved it. I've really, really loved it. Look, uh, we'll get you back in and say, oh, look, as soon as it's finished, cool. we'll get you back in for the reveal. I'm pretty excited about good, it. Good, good. I really want to get back to the studio and get into it. How do you feel about having your portrait done? Is it an easy process for you? I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting there. Yeah. You do the business. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a judgment after it's been done. I'll All see right. if you're any good or not. I hope you're going to improve me. <laughs> okay, Graham. Um, we're done, pretty much. Very Let good. me put this uh, materials down. How's Thank the you. portrait coming on? Uh, Can I have a look? Early stages. No, you can't. Oh, okay. No, no. Wait till the final whistle. Yeah, they're always very sensitive. These people. Eh? Oh, yeah, 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 yep. Look, we'll get you in as soon as it's done. Okay. And, uh, and you and Kevin can uh, feast yes. your eyes. Kevin's quite a, a quiet guy, so instantly I thought that the painting was just going to have a serenity about it. And the placement's going to be really important. It's going to be a, uh, a rectangle portrait, and Kevin's, just his head alone, was, is going to take up two thirds. Because I really want to focus on him and that quiet power that he has inside. I really picked up on that while we were talking. Uh, he's still got quite a boyish face, even though I didn't actually realise how badly broken his nose was <laughs> until I actually started this painting. It was like, and everything's off centre, and I keep going back to fix it, but it's like, no, 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 leave it, because that's, that's the nose, that's where it is. Just before we started the shoot, the interview with Graham, we went outside to the foyer to meet him, and I think he must have seen my face drop because I was not ready for the face peel. Um, to be honest, I panicked a little bit. I thought, what am I going to do? Am I going to, am I going to do a true representation of what I see in front of me, or am I going to tweak it somehow? On a normal painting, you know, I'll have one, two, three, at least 12, 12 basic colours that I use. Sometimes it's just too noisy. By limiting the palette to one or two colours, you just you can cut down um, just some of the the extra volume that that colour can give to the painting. And I see him sort of in a black and white form. Well, I'm just cutting out the noise. Okay, Graham. Moment of truth. 
Yes. How are you feeling, all right? Yeah, very good, thank you. Good, good. Well, look, let's just get into it. Yep, I'll get you to stand right there. Yep. I'm just going to go and uh, put the painting on the easel, if you can just not turn around. Yes, so all good. I'll try and do that. I'll try and do as I'm told. I'm going to leave. Yeah, why is that? Well, you can just, so I don't put you under any duress. Yeah, no, so I don't hit you or anything. Oh, yeah, uh, you can, yeah, that's yeah. all right, that's fine. I haven't hit anybody in the past, but it's always <laughs> Oh, the first so I'm going to be the first one. Great, yeah. awesome. Go down the history. All good. Thank you very much. Goodness me, eh? Very good. Flattering. Not sure if it's good or not. It'll have to do. <laughs> It's big, isn't it? Like it's all encompassing on that on that canvas. And I think he's done a hell of a good job. I get I think it's real. Whether you like it or not, it's a material that's real. Well done. Thanks very much. Uh, Tab, you, you turned up for that initial sitting. I was a bit worried. Yeah, well, you know, you've done well. I'm gonna go back, put it on the easel. Yes. Just relax. Don't turn around. We'll be back in a second. It's up. I'm going to leave. When you're ready, just turn around. We'll do. It's easy. <laughs> you just got to turn around. Good luck, mate. Cheers, mate. <laughs> wow. <Whew>. Speechless. <laughs> wow, he's amazing. Pretty mean. Awesome. Mate, I had the best time painting that. Really? I really did. Uh, it just came together so easily and so fast. I was just wondering, like, what's it like drawing like someone that's not very symmetrical? symmetrical. <laughs> uh, it actually, it, 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 it breaks up the norm. I had to f stop myself from correcting it. Yes. I just can't believe, like, it's like me looking in the mirror, like, it's, it's me exactly, yeah. Yep, that's pretty much on the button, that. Yeah, I think it's probably me, is it? <laughs> but as I say, flattering. But I thought I'd put it on the mantelpiece, keep the kids away from the fire. <laughs> keep the grandchildren away, I think. You think the eyebrows are up? <coughs> What's that? The eyebrows, you think they're up? Mm-hmm. Always raised, always aware. <laughs> they're a good man. Oh, <laughs> just a little bit of work on it. <laughs> what do you reckon? He looks like an old black hooker who's played about 96 test matches. How many has he played? Uh, 92. If I look at that, it's like me looking in the mirror. Yeah, no, he's, he's not bad, is he? He's got some ability, this man. Mm. Do you know who he is? Mm.